show that your God is alive. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You're very certain that this very morning, power will change hands. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I still hear hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brethren, life is being lived from the spirit, Amen. not from the physical. Yes. But unfortunately, a lot of us, the, what we understand is that we live from here to the spirit. Hallelujah. But actually, we are supposed to live from the spirit to here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This morning, we are believing the Lord that he will have his way. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We are believing him that he, that he will have his way. Only his spirit will have his way. Amen. No flesh will glory before him. Amen. No flesh will glory. For no man on earth should give glory to himself. Glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. We are so used to the thing that it's a distraction. You can imagine Jesus ministering to the thousands of people without the instrument. <laughs> Glory be to God. So we've been distracted by this thing enough. So we need to come out from our spirits. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I want us to just worship the Lord for a minute or two, and then we can continue. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing the song that says, Father, Father, we worship you. Oh, Father. Hallelujah. 
believe there are people who are still looking around, who are not saying anything. God, it doesn't take God anything to change any life. All he needs is discernment and the moment of the Spirit. That's all he needs. Praise the Lord. The alignment with the Spirit and discernment. So if you want to go home this morning with something, I think we need to align with the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll sing again and then we'll just pray and then we'll begin. We'll sing the song that says, For thine is the kingdom of power. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Masakaya Rabasute Malike Nalibraha. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the water is being stirred, brethren. <laughs> Just speak. Open your mouth and say something to Him. Open your mouth and say something to Him. The times of the Spirit are not the same. For the Bible recorded that the angels came to us in a certain time to trouble the water. And anyone who jumps in receives healing from the Lord. Receives a touch from the water. Mark Just say something to him. Open your mouth and even if all you say is thank you, Jesus. For the water has been stirred. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I para makondo ni masite, los kabonda ni maha, malukonda ni masite. I para tuki brahale yama, in katuri ya bahande braha, lela katute ni maha. Spirit of the living God, have your way, have your way. Kaba site brahale yamosh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to your name forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless your name. Alpha and Omega. Unchangeable changer. Lion of the tribe of Judah. The head of the armies of the tribe of Israelites. The man of war. Omini potent father. Omini present God. Be ever present, God, in time of need, we give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you for this moment. Thank you forever. Glory to your name forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and we give you honor. Please have your way this morning. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to you. Praise the Lord. I bring greetings to our Father in the Lord. Amen. And Maggie. It is
is a privilege to stand on this altar and I don't take it for granted. May his name be praised forever. Amen. And I greet the pastoral team, the leadership, and you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we are in the presence of God, all what he wants, all what he wants is to be able to touch our hearts so that we go home with a different heart. Praise the Lord. This morning our topic, a Bible passage will be taken from the book of 1 Corinthians 29 verse 11. 1 Corinthians 29 verse 11. That's where the Bible passage will be taken from. 1 Corinthians 29 verse 11. 1 Corinthians, not Samuel. If you're there, you can read. Someone should have a microphone. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord as long as. First Corinthians. First Chronicles. Sorry. First Chronicles 29. Sorry, I keep saying. First Chronicles 29 11. It was a passage that uh, Pastor Zotili talked about some time ago. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Praise the Lord. Amen. This topic, today our topic says his glory, his reign, and the cause of heaven. His glory. His reign and the court of Zion or the cause of heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our Father has tried to give us a definition of what His glory is all about. Over the last few Sundays, He spoke on the definitions of glory, trying to make us catch the glory. One of the definitions is that the glory is dosa. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we are not going to go into the definitions. But the truth, brethren, is this. There is no man living. There is no angel that can be able to describe the full glory of the Lord. No angel, no man living, no words will be able to describe the full glory of the Lord and His reign. No one. Praise the Lord. Because in 1 Timothy 6, verse 16, 1 Timothy 6, verse 16, the Bible tells us that God alone, who is immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable life, where God dwells, is unapproachable light. Even the biggest angels don't even come close there. They stay far. Because of the glory. In fact, where God dwells, He surrounds Himself, according to the Bible, with crystals. Crystals refract and reflect the glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Crystals does what? Refract and reflect the glory. Amen. And the truth is, the glory that crystals reflect, re refract and reflect is not even the full glory. Because if a crystal, what it means, if this is the glory, the crystal will reflect one part, part of this thing and show it and magnify it. And what the angels see is enough to reveal to us who God is. Amen. Let me tell you something, brother. Many people don't even know why they are on earth. <laughs> There's a lot of people. They think they are here just to eat, move around. No, that's not why you're here. <laughs> Many people don't know why they are here. At the end of every journey, you will realize why you are here. Yeah. At the end of every journey. And I pity people who do not start the journey or who have found on their journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. So according to Revelation 4, verse 6, 
Part of that crystal is called sapphire or jasper. That's what God used to surround where he is. Have you ever, have you ever wondered that God made heavens and the earth? And the Bible makes us to understand that he stays in heaven. So where was he when he created heaven? He lived in the he lives in the center of eternity. There is no ending with him. When this generation goes and Jesus did not come, he will still remain God. That is why when the angels approach him, the senior angels that get close to him, all they do is to bow down their heads and say, holy, holy, holy. Meaning you are distant, you are distant. Yeah. You are distant. There is no one like you. That's all they do. And the 24 elders, the Bible makes us to understand that they worship him and say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory in Revelation 4.11. To receive glory, for thou hast created all things, and all things were created for thy pleasure. Revelation 4 verse 11. Praise the Lord. That's what the 24 elders who come close, close, not even very far. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. So for us to understand God, there are articles, some articles we need to understand. One of those articles that we need to understand is that God is a spirit. God is what? Spirit. And you cannot understand the realities of God by physical things. It's impossible. Amen. It's impossible to understand the realities of who God is by physical the things you see. It is impossible. Because before these things were made, He has been God, remember? So we can't understand Him by material things. We can't. It's impossible. You can't take reference from God by material things. No. And the truth is this, brethren. If a man's life does not begin in the spirit, he has no reference with God. Any man's life that does not begin in the spirit has no reference with God. You can live, because life is not about longevity. It's about reference with God. You can live 70 years, but in God's record, he has not seen you. That is why when he called to Adam and said to Adam in the garden, Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was. Yeah. But he saw that Adam had, is lost in his reference. Yeah. The position where Adam was made to stay, he has moved away from there. In the spirit, Adam was not found. Because Adam had disobeyed. Adam had caused the call that made him stand in God's presence. To diminish by his disobedience. So God couldn't see him. That's why he was calling Adam, Adam, where are you? Praise the Lord. Amen. So if any man's life is not referenced from the Spirit, you can be 50 years, but in the realm of the Spirit, you are not, no, no, no record is found. Because remember Moses. Moses, it was from 40 years that his reference began to show. From 40 years. Why? Because part of his life was not to stay in the king's court or in the king's palace. That was not part. It was when he began to do the things for the people of God that God began to recognize him. You see, in the olden times, brethren, in the olden days, we, the blessing of God used to move from generation to generation, from one family to another, from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob. But in the new dispensation, the blessing is the spirit. Is there in Galatians 3, 14? Galatians 3, 14. Galatians. Galatians 3.14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. 
that we might receive the promise of what? The Spirit. The blessing is the Spirit. Remember, he said, he said the blessings of Abraham. Because Abraham had a lot of things. He had cattle, he had this. He didn't say blessings. He said the blessing. One, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit. So in the early days, the blessings used to be cows, animals, goats, how many farmlands you have. But today, the blessing is the Spirit. If the Spirit is upon you, you have blessed. That's why our Father and the Lord made a statement years ago. He said, the day, the moment you receive Jesus, you will begin to walk in blessings. That's where the reference on that came from. And so if God blesses you with a car, with a plane, for example, that plane is not just for you to move around. It's for you to advance the kingdom. If you keep moving around with it, it has no reference in God's presence. Until it begins to do, help to move the kingdom forward. That's when that blessing in your hand is in God's reference. Because spirits don't know cars. They don't know their planes. They move by the glory. Praise the Lord. The second article we need to understand is his righteousness. His what? Righteousness. By righteousness here we don't mean it is not just the ability of God to do right. No. The righteousness of God is power. Is what? Power. That power makes it impossible for him to do wrong, even if he wants to do wrong. <coughs> even if God wants to do wrong, based on his righteousness, he can't. Because his righteousness is power. That is why, if you are, for example, if you are dark, and God looks at you and says you are yellow, immediately he speaks that, you will turn to yellow. Because what he says emanates power. Amen. His word emanates power. His word becomes animated once he speaks it. Glory be to God. Amen. That's what makes him distinguished. That's why he is God. His righteousness alone is power. It's power. That's why when you catch the righteousness of God, you also can walk in that path. There might be several teachers, but your own teaching will be different because people won't even receive just the subject of biology alone. They receive glory. That's why you can be in business. Every other person is doing it. But your own becomes different. Because what? The, yours is different. You have touched the righteousness of God. Another article we need to understand, brethren, is the article of the spirit of life. The spirit of what? Brethren, a man who has light fears nothing. If you are able to touch the light of God, you fear nothing. You won't be afraid of failure. You won't be afraid of disappointment. If God was to appear physically here, no one will run away because of so much glory and light he carries. When I had an encounter with God, that's why even if, even whatever, even if I, I God, I, even if, I will not leave Him. When I had an encounter with God, the light that came to the room where I was, oh my God, the light, I don't have the mouth to describe to you what happened. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. The light was so bright that I can, you can pick up one grain of sand, a grain of sand, you can see it, it's magnified. I couldn't even open my eyes to look. At that light. It was too much. 
And that's why when we used to sing this song, the song, Kukona Imlele Hageme Imlela Elela Luzis Ia Imbana Eli The brightness of that light, the road which Jesus was taking me to, the brightness, brethren, I can't describe it. It was too much. Praise the Lord. So James, I think James 4, 17, tells us that God dwells in the brightness, in, in the light that no one will be able to fathom. That's why Jesus says in, in John 8, John 8, 12, Jesus says, anyone who walks with me will not walk in darkness. He will walk in the light of light. Amen. There is light in God. In Daniel 5, Daniel 5, verse 11, Daniel went to school, went to a test, not just with ordinary people, with astrologers, with soothsayers, with magicians. And I'm not talking about ordinary magicians. They were magicians that appeared before the king. They appeared before the king. But the Bible says that because there is light in him, in, in Daniel 5, 11, he was 10 times better than the astrologers. 10 times. Because of light. I pray that God will help us to catch the realities of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then another article is the spirit of love. The spirit of what? Love is the spirit. And that's why the Bible says God is love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Once that spirit indwells in you, nothing changes it. And you can't exchange it for anything. If truly the spirit of God indwells in you, you cannot exchange it for anything. Because the love is the spirit. It's not an emotion. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's a spirit. That's why if you want to describe it physically, when you see someone who is in love, it's like someone who is drunk. It's like who? Who is drunk? The things he will be doing, he will be behaving like he's drunk. Meanwhile, he's not drunk. He, there is a spirit that has possessed him. That's why even the devil uses it at his own advantage. That's why even people can say, I love him. He will find you with a death message, but he will kill the person. He's been possessed. Now he's no longer by the spirit of God or spirit of love. It is the spirit of love and destruction. The devil uses it also. Praise the Lord. That's why in Revelation 2, God said to the Ephesian church, you have lost your first love. The spirit of love has moved away. And anything we do for God or we do around God without love is nothing. It's nonsense. He has no reference before God. Praise the Lord. If we cannot possess the spirit of love, we cannot function in glory. And his love is always a test to our character and our activities. It's always what? A test to our character and to our activities. That was why when Abraham offered Isaac, if you read Genesis 22, now God turned around and said, now I know that you love me. Oh. After how many years? Praise the Lord. Amen. The fifth article that we'll consider this morning is the spirit of Omni. Omni spirit. O I O M N I. Praise the Lord. Amen. It comes from a Latin word, Latin alphabet, Omni. It means all. So when we say God is omnipresent, 
It means he is everywhere. Do you understand the bit that God is there? Everywhere. 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 That's one of the things that makes his glory heavy. He's everywhere. If you're on the earth, he's there. On the ground, in the beneath, uh, on the inside, you see, he's there. He's there. Everywhere he is. You are passing, he's there. <laughs> you are driving, he's there. Yeah. You are in school, in your class, he's there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's everywhere, brethren. Omnipotent, he's all powerful. There is no one that can be compared to his power. Yes. No one. Praise the Lord. Amen. All powerful God. When he is with you, ah, the matter is settled. Amen. Amen. When he's truly with you, the matter is settled. Amen. The problem is not him, it's you to align with his will. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. To align with his will. So when we say he's omniscient, he knows all things. All things he knows. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. He knows all things. And so before we move on to the courts of Zion, the courts of heaven, there are several courts in Zion, but there are three main courts. There are what? Three main, three main courts. By court, we mean the court you know, where you have lawyers, judges, we, you, you know, you understand that. Yeah. The first court is the executive court. The what? The executive. executive court. It is the court of the immortals. Number one is what? The court of the immortals. No mortal appears in that court. No mortal comes there. The court of the Godhead. The highest court of heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. The highest court of where? Amen. Heaven. For example, in Genesis 1.26, this court sat and said, let us make man in our own image. That was the cause. Amen. That was what? The executive cause. Because the father was talking to the son. The son of what? Which is the word? The word was talking to the spirit. And the spirit was talking to the father. That is the executive cause. Yeah. And the decision there is final. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the same court when Lucifer fell in Ezekiel 28. If you can go home and read Ezekiel 28. Verse 15, particularly. It is the same court that said to him, You were beautiful when you were standing in the mountain of God when you were made. But now iniquity has been found in you. You will be cast down as nothing Amen. from this mountain. That's where the pronouncement came. The court, the executive court of God. The court of heaven. Praise the Lord. It was the same court that pronounced judgment when Adam failed. That said to Satan, his seed, her seed, will break, will, will break your head and your seed will bruise uh, The seed, the, the heel of the seed of this woman. That same court, that's the executive court. Praise the Lord. Amen. What rules in this court? It is the will of God that rules here. The what rules? The will, of God. will. I want you to say it. What rules here? The will of God. Will of God. That's why only sovereignty powers this court. Only sovereignty powers the court. The will of God rules in the executive court. That's why our prayers cannot change the decision of this court. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. Once this court has decided, it has decided. If this court says you will succeed, let all the witch doctors gather around the whole as a thing, you will succeed. Yeah. The court of heaven. Their decision is final. That, it was in this court, brethren, the mere Give us another example. It was in this court that they decided 
The father said to the spirit, and they said to the word, you will die for men. The word said, no, I don't want to die. What is this? I hope you know that Jesus Christ didn't want to die. By his will, he was not going to die. Because that's why he gets a man and he said, it's not my will, it's your will. So he looked around, he's two against one. He had to submit to the will. Because he knows that the will of God rules in this cause. Once it's been agreed, it was agreed that he would die. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the truth is, if you argue in this court, if you come to argue or want to argue the case that this court has decided, they will laugh at you. The immortals will laugh at you. They will say to you what they said to Saul. It is hard to kick against the prey. That's all they will tell you. You can't. Have you seen a man who goes to kick on the rock? That's what they told Saul. You can't fight this. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jonah was sent to a mission. Jonah abandoned the mission and began to run. Yeah. By this same course. <laughs> they just laughed. They let him enter the boat. He entered. They didn't stop him. They let him join him. They told him to go to Nineveh. He's going to Tashis now. They left him. Out in the middle of the sea, when they knew that there was no, the land was not closed, they began to travel the sea. Jonah, you must go to the near. You have to go. There's no other way. And they tried everything, nothing. Jonah himself was the one who surrendered. I said, I surrender. I am the cause. Please throw me to the water. And they threw him to the water. And this same cause caused a whale fish. To swallow Jonah yeah. and take him to the shores of Nineveh. Because yeah. he must go there. That's the will of the Father. Yeah. The second court in Zion is the legislative court. Is the what? And there are four things that rule in the legislative legislative court. Courts. The legislative court. This is where. Laws that govern men have been made. Praise the Lord. Laws that govern men have been made here. You can argue your case here. The four things that rule here is the wrath of God. The what? The wrath of God. Second, the mercy of God. Third, the grace of God. Fourth, the love of God. I'll start again. The wrath of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, and the love of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, that, for example, sometimes you are chosen by God. And you mess up. According to the wrath of God, you are finished. You are done. Praise the Lord. And when you appear in this court, the mercy of God will speak first. And say, Father, have mercy. Your mercy prevails over judgment. The love of God will not find a wisdom to save you from what caused you to fail. And the grace of God will not empower you to live above that which made you fail. Praise the Lord. Amen. So here we see when Adam failed, brethren, the human race was to be wiped out in the agenda of God once Adam failed. Because he had lost authority to stay in the garden. He was to be wiped out. That's what happened to the human race. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So the message spoke first. He said, God, let's find a way. And then the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. But according to the wrath of God, the Bible says, 
that in Romans 3, 23, says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory. And he says, the wages of sin is what? So because this court had already decided that the wages of sin is dead, something had to happen. Praise the Lord. Something had to happen. Because even though God has forgiven you, even though that the message has spoken, spirits don't forgive. Spirits don't do what? Forgive. They always require an atonement. They don't forgive. So the love of God has to find a wisdom for God himself to come and die in the, in the person of the Son. And die for mankind. So in God's eyes, it was you that died. So that's why when Jesus went to the cross, we were there with him. When he went to the grave, we were there with him. When he resurrected, we were there with him. Everyone who believes in his name was there with him. Praise the Lord. So what rules in the legislative court is the wisdom of God. Is what? The wisdom of God. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, what we are doing is that we are legislating. Praise the Lord. The third court of heaven before we close, now before we pray, is the judicial court. The what? The judicial. judicial court. This court is the honor of every person. Let, let's see. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17. When he opens there. This honor is the honor of every believer. This is our court now. Praise the Lord. Amen. The first court was the court of the immortal. Mm -hmm. The second court was the court of both the immortal and the mortal. But the last court is basically our court. The judicial court. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I have to say, say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every thought which rises against you in judgment, you shall do what? One day. He says, this heritage is of the servant of the Lord. It is our honor to be able to judge in this court. Praise the Lord. And what we judge with? We judged based on what has been done by Jesus. We judge here based on what? What has been done by who? Jesus. That's what we used to judge in the judicial court. We judge here based on what has been written. The words of God has been written down. So we use them and judge. Praise the Lord. Because they are unchangeable words. We judge here based on the help of the Holy Spirit. That's how we judge here. We judge here based on the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We judge here by the name of Jesus. By the name of who? Jesus. That's our final judgment stick. That is why faith in the name of Jesus produces results. Faith in the name of Jesus produces results. Praise the Lord. Amen. It does produce results. And what rules in this court is the purpose of God. Praise the Lord. The what? The purpose of God. That's what is ruling in this court. So every time we use the name of Jesus based on his purpose, it will happen. Praise the Lord. And as we pray this morning, brethren, Christianity is the business of glory. Praise the Lord. It's what a, the business of glory. Moses so much lived in the light of God and in the spirit of God. 
that he could tell what happened in the beginning. You read that Moses read Genesis, right? Wrote Genesis, right? Leviticus, every other Exodus and all that. How did Moses write Genesis? He wasn't there. He wasn't there. But he joined in the light of God. He joined in the spirit of God. He climbed the mountain and God gave him the story of what happened in the beginning. He wrote it down. So Christianity is the business of glory. John the Beloved was taken to the island of Patmos. And in the island of Patmos, there was no comfort. He was there. Nothing shielded him from cold. He was to die of cold. But he didn't bother whether he was in the island or he was in his room sleeping. He was, he was in his bedroom. All he bothered was that he was in the spirit. Because he said in the day that the Lord came, I was in the spirit. In the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. There, God showed him what was to happen. Both now and in the end. That's where God showed him. That's Revelation. That's how he wrote Revelation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, the value of a man's life is based on the glory he carries and yields. That's the value. It's based on the glory he carries and he yields. So like, if you've been coming to Bible study, I always thought, if you are found in a bank, you are to be an ambassador here. And yield the glory of God there. If you are found in a school, you are to be an ambassador there. Praise the Lord. Amen. For us to reflect the Lord's glory, we must constantly behold. We must what? Constantly behold. For us to reflect the Lord's glory. Because remember, the glory changes. Times are not the same in the spirit. There are different times. So we must constantly behold. That's what our team says. That we with open face, beholding him like a man. Have been changed. For one glory. Let us rise up as prayer. Want us to talk to the Lord and say to the Lord and say, Father, may nothing move me away from your purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let's go ahead and talk to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, may nothing move me away from your purpose, Lord. What are you must say for the heart? May nothing, nothing, nothing. May not get me well. May not children, may not family, may nothing move me away from your purpose. Kabalima satebra halegaba. Linda kalema hundo libraha. Sute kaponda limaha. May nothing move me away from your purpose, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. One more prayer or two, then we'll close now. We need to pray and say, Father, Father your, will for me your will for me will definitely happen. Will definitely In the name of the Lord Jesus, go ahead talk to the Lord. Father, your will for me, your will for my children, your will for my family will definitely happen. Doesn't matter the opposition. Your will will happen, Lord. Only your will will happen. Only your will will happen. Your will will happen. Your will will happen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final prayer now. We need to pray. And talk to God. And say, Father, Father anything, anything 
that rises up against me in judgment. I condemn that thing. I condemn that thought. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. Masakaya Ramasite Brahalinamu. Whatever rises up against me in judgment, I condemn. Anything that the enemy wants to use to rise against me in judgment, I condemn. Who will not allow it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. He lifted me up. From the deep man declared, I he planted my feet on the king's highway, and that is the reason I sing a song.
appreciate the three times that you <laughs> talk. Uh, you get to sit it. You have had so much strength that I said sit down more than three times, <laughs> but you remain standing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. That was great stuff. And praise the Lord. This, this is high stuff. Yeah. I tell you, if you grant that, yes. your walk will not be the same. Amen. 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 Brother Ron, as, as Pastor Elvis said when he began preaching, we cannot fully explain the Lord's glory. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, We see in part, we prophesy in part, but when we get to the other side, but you know what, even the part itself is so powerful that it overcomes the world. So. That that's what will make us different from the world. That's what Moses said in Exodus chapter 33. He said, God, you said you will go with me. Now, what is happening? And God said, my presence will walk with you. And when his presence walks with us, that's why I was about him. You come with uh, you come for Bible uh, lessons, you come for the you, you change, you change with the language. Because you cannot climb the ladder of prosperity in garments of poverty. It will change your thinking, it will change your talking, it will change your everything. Guess what? Even your association. You see, there are things that are so contagious in life. You may be right, thinking right, but the people you associate yourself with, I'm telling you. I was in a meeting, no, not a meeting, a, a function yesterday. I was looking around, I looked around. The function was good, but it is one function that made me think. I think this issue of greeting and hugging people <coughs> should be looked at differently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh -uh. I, I had, uh, there was a kid and not a few from the church. I, I spoke to well, my wife. I said, I, I think this issue of Hugging people. I mean, you get you get into a function, you hug everyone, even people who don't know. You don't know what you are picking from these people. I, I mean, I'm in this function, but I'm, I'm, I'm raising myself spiritually to be because you know when 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 you 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 hug everyone and people are. Uh, somehow today, <laughs> you, you are picking some spirits, and these spirits tend to <laughs> bring you under subjection. They maneuver you. You'll find yourself struggling in life because these spirits are used at maneuvering you. Then I said, mm, I'm not going to allow this. I will greet everyone, but I won't hug everyone. It's not a verse. It's something that came from my spirit as I was looking. So that I don't hug everyone. Because I, I mean, I wish you, you, could, you could get a picture of what I'm talking about. I mean, there was some moving, you know, that stylish. You see that this one. Telling stuff as spirits. 
So as I was looking at, ah, tell me, we, we, we came to that place, tell Some things are not your best, but the spirit can tell. Amen. Amen. Don't move, don't move around. I didn't say it's sin, Pastor yeah. But I'm saying, watch. Because you will be picking personalities. Picking personalities. People do know no problem. But people don't know. And some of them, people don't, but there are those who, from a distance, you can tell. Mm -hmm. They are not beyond here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we must see legions from a distance. And then run away from it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time, for your word that has been shared. I pray the Holy Spirit continue to reveal to us your purpose. Father, we know that if we move with that understanding of your purpose, everywhere we go, we'll be turning tables upside down. We honor you, we bless you for loving us so much that you are revealing these truths. Walk by. 